That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Outside the Wire, the latest film directed by Mikhail Hafstrom, uh, which will be available to stream on Netflix January 15th, 2021. What are Mikhail's other films? Uh, he's probably, of course, he's Swedish originally, so he's done uh, several films in his uh, native uh, mother tongue. But he's known uh, in, for his studio films like 1408 with Sam Jackson and John Cusack, I believe. It's a Stephen King uh, adaptation. And mm -hmm. The Right with Anthony Hopkins, which I know you've seen and probably remember none of. Oh, he also directed the first Escape Plan with... Uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger. I'm familiar with that. So there you go. This film stars Anthony Mackie and... Damson Idris. Who I liked. Okay, Dampton? Damson. Like, Dam Dam like Damson. Damson. Damson plays a character named Lieutenant Harp. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's 2036. Mm -hmm. There's some like civil unrest in Eastern Europe somewhere. And Lieutenant Harp is part of like US military mm -hmm. and he is like a drone operator mm -hmm. and there's like an incident occurring in the very beginning of the film where there are like some insurgents and some soldiers on the ground all these terms I don't know and he's in charge of deploying like a bomb to the area and he's waiting for orders because there are men on the ground and they don't want collateral damage mm -hmm. but Lieutenant Harp takes it upon himself to release the weapon to deploy yeah mm -hmm. and ends up killing two of his own men but he believes save 38 and had he not acted all 40 would have died but he's reprimanded and his punishment is to be sent to a like training facility where basically he will learn how to behave this um, it's a military outpost uh actually <laughs> where he'll learn how to follow directions yes because that, that's kind of the thrust of the film he's facing court martial and uh during that uh, interaction it's made clear that he has never been in actual combat hand to hand yeah. a combat right so um doug stamper from house of cards i.e michael kelly he is sort of like the person in charge and then he says you're going to be working with old boy leo played captain leo captain leo played by anthony mackie we find out right away anthony mackie's character is like a cyborg fourth generation biotech we're told okay which not everybody's aware of apparently no and so when he take when he takes his shirt off, he has kind of a looks like, like he's like an aquarium because you can see through it. <laughs> yeah, like like he would be an extra on Black Panther. He's not that cool, but yeah. Um, so outside the wire, so they're like this military outpost. Um, they're safe there, but once they leave, they're subject to like attack. So Captain Leo explains to Lieutenant Harp like, well. We're gonna to try to capture this character named uh, Victor Koval, who's like an Osama bin Laden type character. But he's played by Pilo Aspek, uh, the Danish uh, actor. Who I think looks like Joshua Jackson. Yes, but you, you actually, you should know him from Overlord. I remember that movie being good, but I don't remember him. And he's very good in uh, a hijacking by Tobias Lindholm. So Leo's mission, Leo's gone rogue. So that's the twist of the film. This cyborg, this AI, thinks that it knows better like better than humans and it leo the cyborg has decided that it needs to destroy the united states basically so he's been working on getting nuclear warheads or like access codes to these warheads that's why he's so he's kind of in cahoots with the bad guy uh whatever his name is but really he ends up killing him mm -hmm. gets the codes and then sets off like these nuclear warheads but at the very last minute lieutenant harp in like a role reversal because now he's on the ground mm -hmm. subject to being like shot at and killed he has to make a decision on how to handle it and ultimately he instructs another drone fighter to release like a bomb mm -hmm. that destroys the nuclear warhead, which was very confusing to me because they blow up like what looks like Chernobyl and it just looks like an explosion. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be like an extinction level event. Like they blew up this like warhead. But anyway, that's the end of the film. Yeah, he's basically, basically congratulated and like, yay, come home. Like, yeah. Uh, that he learned his lesson. Uh, uh, and also part of Leo's agenda is to prove that his level of artificial intelligence perhaps shouldn't be utilized. 
Yeah, that's his. Yeah. Uh, so his uh, intentions are not uh, necessarily like uh, out of malice. Mm -hmm. He just thinks that like this type of um, like AI is dangerous and he needs to destroy it. Yeah, it's kind of an overly complicated form about teaching lessons. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So generally movies about war and like action don't appeal to me. But if you do like that kind of stuff and you like the sound of like guns going off repeatedly, I feel like you'd probably like this movie. Sure. Yeah, I didn't. But it's OK. It's, it's better than something like Extraction. Oh, which yeah, Extraction to me was so dull and I barely remember it. And I was reading an interesting article because that had according to Netflix the most views ever of a film and now there's going to be a trilogy or something and how there's zero cultural impact is something that was so widely consumed. interesting um, but yeah I, I think it's a step above something like that uh, perhaps less interesting than another recent Anthony Mackie movie Synchronic maybe I, I do think I, I did like to see that there are two black male leads uh, I thought that was uh, an interesting dynamic and something we should see more of Sure. So just a few notes I have. The, so they, they are like robot soldiers. The Gumps. And they're called Gumps. Mm -hmm. G-U-M-P-S. -G and uh, then you had said that they're like... Um, I said it looked like short circuit on steroids. Well, because they're kind of bottom heavy. Yeah, they are bottom heavy. These robots look like people, but they don't have heads. And then they're bottom heavy and hippie. Like, yeah, they got some thick thighs. And they're kind of bow-legged. And I think my only note about them is you might as well gump. Um, and then Krasny is a term that's uh, thrown around to talk about the enemy insurgents because they're in the Ukraine. Okay. Um, watching this movie made me want to watch like just reminiscent of the um, the Gumps, like a more interesting movie like District 9. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there could be a drinking game for every time Harp says with all due respect. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote down because you had mentioned it that he played, he felt a lot like if you dropped Lil Nas X <laughs> if Little Nas X had to do hand to hand combat, in the like, demilitarized zone. Yeah, in a demilitarized zone. Mm -hmm. That's what this character seemed like to be. And then it was also, it, it just feels overly complicated and in a kind of vague way, some, where maybe it's also one of those films that's not interesting enough to where I'm completely paying attention all the time. But Emily Beecham shows up, who just won best, well, not just, in 2019 was Best Actress in Cannes for Little Joe, who's this kind of vibrant uh, little redhead. Uh, and she's uh, apparently heading up the rebellion that Anthony Mackie's also working in conjunction with and there's yeah that's another plot point uh, and, and then she uh, her um, crew kidnaps uh, harp at one point and he has a bag over his head and they inject this huge needle in his neck and it's her voice saying like we just gave you sodium pentothal just kidding it's antibiotics for your wounds <laughs> like yeah like truth serum and then he starts talking and she's like we just gave you antibiotics <laughs> like okay um there's a scene earlier on where a bad guy is captured and he's like shot in the neck mm -hmm. so he's like bleeding profusely from this huge uh hole in his neck and leo anthony mackie's character decides like he's 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 got the information he needs from him so he lets him go to be beat up by some other bad guys mm -hmm. and i don't normally like violence but i thought the scene where they are beating him up was funny because they will tizz ass like a pinata do you know yeah, what i'm talking about yeah. that scene <laughs> that was actually kind of funny um so the, part of the way that leo tricks lieutenant harp is he has him early on because he says like the Russians can monitor me so you have to cut out this transmitter from my back mm -hmm. and then later on he tells Harp like well you destroyed government properties because so. that was my fail safe you removed so mm -hmm. you're already in cahoots so you got to listen to me I feel like the entire premise of like Harp being sent to this thing and then being combined with Leo and then their little shenanigans it was a little flimsy to me. I think it really kind of falls apart in the final stretch there, especially with how it ends. Like, okay, you're coming home now. Like, well, doesn't that have to be decided? Oh, or? because when the when the drone drops the missile or whatever that device is on the nuclear warhead, um, the timer says there's like 50 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And oh, then yeah. Harp starts running. And I mean, I don't think Jackie Joyner Kersey could run far enough in 50 seconds to get away from that kind of explosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. I didn't quite understand. I assume if you like ignite a nuclear bomb, it would explode like the bomb. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a 
astrophysicist or whatever I don't know anyway what else uh, really that's about it again I think as I mentioned earlier it just feels like kind of a, a big lesson for this character who's now on the other side of um, the situation he was at at the beginning and in that collateral damage you know that human life when human lives are at stake we really can't treat it like we're playing a video game no we cannot what would you give this film uh, two out of five I would give it two and a half out of five. I think it's well put together and the uh, it looks pretty cool. Like the special effects look pretty good. Good enough. Good, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just that there isn't anything innately memorable that wanted to draw me back to it ever again. No. Uh, but yeah. All right, bye. Bye.